I was brought up and was born in Japan. And only things I remember about my father is when uh, he was fighting with my, my mother. I was about two years old. And he later got killed, so I never really got to know him. And my mother left me for quite a long time with my grandmother. And, you know, my favorite playground when I was small was at the graveyard at the Buddhist temple. And it was, you know, it was quite interesting because there was always the, there was plenty of food I can find. <laughs> there, was always, there was always the favorite uh, grave spot. I can go to to find uh, my favorite food. I spent a lot of time at the uh, at the Buddhist temple often, and when I was uh, living with my grandmother, when I took uh, when my mother took me back once again that uh, to her to live with her that um, she got married again twice more, but she always got divorced and I was moved from place to place every year and I sometimes have to go to two schools, new schools um, every year, you know, and it was very difficult for me I, it was, I couldn't find any new friend I was always rejected as a stranger so I grew up not trusting anybody and I grew up not knowing what love is. I was so hungry for love, something to fill my heart. And when I was 16, I became so desperate, I asked the Buddha for an answer for my life, the truth of my life, something that, that can fill my heart. And he was silent. He never answered my prayer. Also, I asked uh, my ancestors for an answer. They never replied also to me. That was quite a disappointing for me because I thought they would reply, but they didn't. And I thought that I better try the, something else. So I went to a Shinto temple, or Shinto shrine, and well, I was told there is seven million gods in, in Shintoism. So I thought maybe one of seven million gods will have a mercy on me to answer. But they did, did, um, none of their gods uh, didn't answer my prayer. Didn't answer the cry of my heart. And after that I decided to go to yoga school. And when I came back from yoga school, uh, finishing the course, that a strange thing started happening every day. And I was terrified every day to leave because suddenly, always I found myself locked in a coffin. It was real. I was conscious. Something was trying to kill me in the coffin. and. I couldn't get up. I banged the lid of the coffin so hard. I couldn't get out. But finally, when I managed to get out, I found myself floating in a total darkness. There was nothing around me. There was no light, nobody. Later, only God you know, showed me that they um, He was showing me that he, unless I come to know him, that I will go to the darkness forever. And I went to the gate of hell. And I was so terrified every day. Because I knew that what would happen to me and I was hearing strange noises and voices every day. 
and I was walking around in the evening without knowing. That nothing like that happened in my life before, so um, I was very curious, and I was terrified, but I wanted to find out more about what's happening. And so um, after I went to a um, school called Silver Mind Control, where they taught me that New Age, psychic power, and magic, and all kinds of things. And during the course, they taught me to invite the two beings to guide into my heart, and I did. And from that time on, these two beings, two guide, was with me all the time. And whenever I needed to find out something, whenever I needed the power, I just needed to, I just had to go and meet them and got whatever I wanted. And I was getting so desperate. I thought that if I had more power, I could find something to change me, to fill my empty heart. And also by that time that I was leaving my body, my spirit, and traveling around in my spirit, and I enjoyed phoning to my friend to tell them what they what they got in their house and what they were doing. I thought that my heart will be satisfied if I show off my power to the people. But I wasn't. I wasn't satisfied at all. And I knew I tried everything I could find, I could place my hand on, and I felt. So um, I thought maybe if I go to a new place, I could find something to change me. So I left Japan, it was in 86. And I started traveling like a hippie from place to place every day and getting involved in drugs and alcohol and smoking and all kinds of things. But none of the new towns, new villages I went to changed me. I didn't find anything new. I didn't find anything to satisfy my heart. <laughs> 